Oh, it's definitely a matter of preserving the stories because without, you know, without the stories, these are just pictures and little trinkets and old things, especially the bricks or pieces of mortar or anything I have from buildings that were torn down. Get a spark going from being like, oh, that's what it used to look like. I had no idea. Like you get to see somewhere you've been your whole life in a completely different way. I love releasing content and producing it the way I do. I think history should be accessible to everybody. My name is Joe Bimbacco and I am the curator of Old Sioux. So Old Sioux is more or less just a bit of a photographic series documenting the history of Sault Ste. Marie in a more accessible and digestible way than reading a marathon of paragraphs, I guess. Uh, I usually do before and after comparison photos going back as far as the 1800s up until the present day. And really, I'm just trying to document the history that we have here and the history that we're losing. When people remember Queen Street back in the 40s and 50s, they remember two-way traffic. There's a collection of photos that really inspired me to do this. And it was a photo collection by a man named Robert S. Platt. And he did a whole photo series around Canada, around the world basically, but he stopped here in the suit and just shot everything around town like side streets and small little places that you wouldn't think had any sort of significance whatsoever, but they're here captured in a moment almost 100 years ago in beautiful quality, might I add. In a way, I feel like I was walking in his footsteps kind of capturing those same places today, obsessively, might I add. Well, I will admit, it does feel like a bit of a treasure hunt sometimes, and, and especially like lining up the perfect shot or something like that, or finding an old photo that I've never seen before because I've been doing this for just about four years now. But like this souvenir book of the land of Hiawatha. And I am pretty sure this one is from the 1920s. So this book is running at about a century old now. The experience of finding something and going to that spot and then learning more about that place through whatever way I can, whether it's historical material at the library, books, newspaper articles, anything like that. As long as there's some way I can accurately find dates or information, then I'm happy with that. Honestly, my, one of my major goals with Old Sioux as a whole is also getting people interested in preserving what historical artifacts and buildings and just anything possible that we still have around. We do have systems in place to protect a lot of places. Some do fall through the cracks, unfortunately, and that has been happening a lot more often than not. If you're someone like me who has an appreciation for beautiful architecture and just staples that we've had in the city for over 100 years, it can be heartbreaking when you see places like that go. It's a labor of love for sure because like, I don't make a dollar off of anything I do on Old Sioux and I don't mind that at all, honestly. Like, I don't do this to gain anything out of it. The only thing I want out of doing Old Sioux is for more people to fully step up to the plate when places that made the city are under threat. But yeah, every brick I collect kind of has its own little story and any place with historical significance that either burns down, gets demolished, or gets torn down due to neglect or anything like that. I kind of save a piece of it just to kind of tell the story sometime later down the road. It's always really heartwarming to uh, get comments from people who've lived in the Sioux their entire lives and they're getting up there in age these days who tell you that you know, you've given them an appreciation for the city they still live in. As long as I can get people interested in this kind of stuff, and especially if they're younger folks, if I can get people in high school or college or even younger than that to get some sort of appreciation for the history of our city and just develop a love for this kind of thing too, then I'm happy. And I think everybody should have a chance to, I don't know, see something that's a hundred years old. <laughs> yeah, that's been my main reason for preserving a lot of the past is to keep the stories going in any way that I can, whether I'm telling them online or if I have somebody come over and just being like, oh, what's that? What's this? What's that? It's like, as long as it catches people's eye and like gets them interested, then I'm happy.